Coach says the 1986 season has been one of frustration. Their record was 6-2 and two at midpoint. It is now 7-6. and six. But with a win tonight and in their final two games, the Cowboys still can make the playoffs. But the man they must stop tonight is Eric Dickerson, who is running away with the NFL Russian title. And it was Dickerson who in the playoffs a year ago stormed over, around, and through Dallas for 248 yards. The Rams shutting the Cowboys out 20 to nothing. And now with the emergence of rookie quarterback Jim Everett, the Rams' offense is no longer one-dimensional. Tonight is only Everett's third start, but he has already shown the qualities of future greatness. The 9-4 and four Rams lead the NFC West, and all they need to do is to keep winning to wrap up their second consecutive divisional title. Tonight from Anaheim, the Cowboys and the Rams. Third down. Delver over the middle is picked off by Kermit Alexander. Kermit ain't got nothing but stripes in front of him. No way they're gonna get him. Third down now. A long three. Draw back. Ball deflected, but it's still caught there by number 33, Tony Dorsett. And it's look out. Ah, look out. All right. Norm right. Thompson misses. It should be all over. It's all over. All oh, the time in the world. Look out, Dorset. Oh, Our ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new Go Anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your deep Nissan dealer now. By Miller Highlight. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Radio Shack your Christmas electronic store, and by the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Anaheim, California, where we think we have a good matchup for you tonight if your eyeballs aren't spinning from all the games you've been watching all day long. The Rams and the Cowboys, they've been meeting for a lot of times over the past few years. But tonight, the playoff picture is very clear, at least as far as the players and coaches are concerned. The Cowboys feel they must win all three of their games if they are going to make a playoff, and that would be, of course, as a wild card. The Rams will need to win two of their last three. And for the Rams, they are about as high as we've seen them for a long time. John Robinson, in his fourth year, when you talk to him, is absolutely exuberant about the optimism he feels for this football team. And a lot of it comes about with the arrival of Jim Everett, their quarterback. Jim Everett has all the potential to become a truly great football player and for John Robinson that's something special he likes to run the football of course and he has been much maligned here in LA over the years because all he has been doing is winning but he has not been doing it in a very colorful way he likes to run Dickerson and when Dickerson doesn't run well he runs him back again and that's how they have been winning so it looks good for the Rams they feel good about the way things are shaping up and for the Dallas Cowboys Al Michaels uh, such is not the same Tom Lambie I think is wondering what happened at midseason to us well what's happened in particular in the last two games Frank is they've been blown out by a cumulative 72 to 28 but at least for the Cowboys they control their own destiny and their season is really wrapped up in tonight's game in terms of staying alive even though they'd be mathematically alive what they have to do and it would guarantee them a wild card spot is win their last three games tonight next Sunday in Dallas against Philadelphia and then their final game of the season at Texas Stadium against the Chicago Bears what's happened to Dallas well they sprung a lot of leaks the offensive line has been very inconsistent Three weeks ago, they allowed 11 sacks against San Diego despite winning the game. The defensive line has grown old along with the rest of the defense in a hurry, and it is no longer the doomsday defense. And I feel the single key factor has been the absence of that man, Danny White, who fractured his wrist in the Cowboys' second game against the New York Giants. Steve Pelour has come on. He has taken over. His numbers are not that bad. But in terms of how many points Dallas has been able to put on the board, it's been a big difference. And it's been a big difference in terms of the winning and losing percentage of the Cowboys. And as far as Dallas is concerned, they cannot bank on the return of Danny White. He's gone for the year. It's in the hands of Pelour, and they hope a healthier Herschel Walker and Tony Dorsett, who both been hobbled by injuries. 
Meanwhile, the Rams to kick off, and Mike Lansford, whose 50-yard field goal in the waning seconds beat the Chicago Bears to get November started for the Rams. He'll be kicking off and back deep to receive. Robert Levette is number 29, and Darrell Clack, who has fumbled kickoffs in each of the last two games, is back to receive. Georgia Fontieri, the owner and president of the Los Angeles Rams, down on the field, exhorting her club on as they attempt to take another step toward the NFC West title. And here we go as the kick is taken by Darrell Clack at the eight. And Clack with a nice run back takes it out to the 41 yard line. So a 33 yard return and Palour will come in. Steve making his eighth start of the season in this game number 14 for the Cowboys. And the men with him, Dorsett and Walker for the second time start in the same backfield. They started for the first time on Thanksgiving Day as a pair. And the guys up front Cos Derrick in particular, as all Dallas fans know, have been having trouble with holding calls, especially in the Giants game at the end, from the 41-yard line. They start with a swing pass and a juggling catch by Dorsett and a tackle by Cromwell, who comes up from the secondary, and no gain. Reed Miller and the veteran Doss, the three-man L.A. front, and then the linebackers, Owens, Drew, Eckern, and Wilcher. The secondary outstanding. Jerry Gray made a big play last week. Irvin's a pro bowler. Newsom and Cromwell. Chandler and Cosby are in the game for Dallas as they come up in a double tight end set. On second and ten. And it's Dorsett running into the middle of the Rams defense. And Mark Giroux, number 59, amongst those in on the tackle. Third and ten. Now you alluded to the fact this is the second time now that this tandem has started. Tony Dorsett and Herschel Walker in. We all know they can move the ball in the air and on the ground when they're running. The question is, what kind of a blocker is Herschel Walker going to be for Tony Dorsett? In the Cowboys scheme of thing, however, the fullback, in this case Herschel Walker tonight, he is used so much as a pass receiver, almost like another club might use a tight end. Meanwhile, shotgun and three wide receivers. looking for the 50-yard line, gets there, but that will be a yard shy of the first down. He had to go to the Rams 49. So Dorsett and the Cowboys just come up short as Vince Newsom comes up to make the tackle and stop a first down. Rams defense is tough. They have been characterized by Leroy Irvin as, well, a high school defense playing Pop Warner football is three deep, but they keep everything in front of them. And it's paid off rather well. They are third in the league coming into tonight. A very tough defense. Not a lot of big names, but they are very effective. Henry Ellard, who was a holdout through midseason and has not been returning punch to this point up to par. Saxon gets it away and it's a deep kick and the Rams let it bounce and the Cowboys can't stop it from going into the end zone. And so Everett and the Rams come out now to the 20-yard line. Everett out of Purdue, drafted by Houston, didn't sign with the Oilers, and then the Rams traded for him. Dickerson is the big man. Redden silently is having a fine season. Brown, Ellard, and Hill, the wide receivers. Hill is the tight end and the good offensive line. They traded Kent Hill, and Tom Newberry is the rookie left guard, and he's been impressive. He'll have to be tonight because he will be going mainly against number 54, Randy White. There you see it right in the middle of the line. Newberry 66, Randy White 54. Redden goes in motion, and Everett goes to the air, and he starts with a pass to Redden, and Redden is out of bounds near a first down. He is just shy of it out at the 29-yard line. The four-man front with Jones, Dutton, White, and Jeffco. Lockhart is the man in the middle with Hegman and Rohrer on the outside and Walls, Fellows, Bates, and Downs. The Cowboys have had a lot of injuries this season, but not defensively. Ten of those 11 have started every game this year. Second down, half a yard. 
from just shy of the 30. And Dickerson, it's automatic on second and inches as Rohrer makes the tackle. First down at the 32. Dickerson, who Tom Landry said to me today, can he has the best qualities of every back in the National Football League. He's big, he's strong, he's swift. He is absolutely, in Tom's own words, the best running back in this game today. And Tom, I asked him, said, what do you do about that? He said, well, it's kind of fun. I'm an old defensive coach. We treat, put it together and hope we can stop him, hope we can keep him under 100 yards. The last time they met, he went for 248 yards. First and 10. Rams at their own 33-yard line. Hill goes in motion. The fake pitch and then the toss to Redden. And he takes it out to the 35-yard line. John Dutton, number 78. In on the tackle, along with two tall Jones. Did you see the arm on Everett? He rifled that out there. That's a very tough pass to get out there on a line and not get the defensive back up quickly while the ball's in the air. He was absolutely perfect with it, right on the target. And Johnny Robinson, when he talks about this youngster, his eyes just light up. He uses all kinds of words. But the phrase, the key phrase is, he is a real leader, even at this young age. He has become the leader of this Rams offensive team. Second and eight. Cowboys clog up the middle as Redden gets the give. And he stopped for a loss of two by John Dutton, number 78. The Cowboys compressing and clogging up the middle and no room at all. So it'll be third and long. Interesting numbers for the Cowboys ended tonight. They were first against the pass, 23rd against the rush. Those, of course, figures are based on yardage given up. They've had 44 sacks. And 12 incompletions, you look at it, you would say, well, I can run against it. And indeed, Kurt Warner on Thanksgiving Day went 122 yards rushing against Dallas. The Rams, they would love to do that, but right now they have been pressed into a pass situation. Third and nine from the 34. Everett protected well and nearly has it intercepted. Michael Downs got his hands on it. Everett has had two passes intercepted in each of the last two games, and both passes in each instance have come in the first quarter, so he's been a slow starter. You know, when you watch him, Al, I think he is probably just kind of giving a picture of being cool. I bet there are a lot of butterflies fluttering around in there. He has started slowly in each of his three games, but he has always come back and been so much better later on. Hatcher, who was a Pro Bowl rookie last year to kick, Calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 24 yard line. So each team has punted once after a 41 yard kick by Hatcher. There is a news conference scheduled in Berkeley, California tomorrow to announce the new University of California head football coach. And you're looking at a man who is the odds on choice to be at the podium. Bruce Snyder is the running back coach and running game coordinator for the Rams and tomorrow at 11 o'clock when the Golden Bears announce the successor to Joe Cap, Mr. Snyder is liable to have dual roles as he continues on with the Rams through the end of the regular season as well. Snyder and Dick Curry of course he figures in putting the offense together week by week for the Rams. First down Dallas in the 25 yard line and it's Dorsett springing loose and taking it out to the 39. A 14-yard pickup for Dorsett, who has been so durable through the years, but bothered by injuries to the extent he has missed three full games already in 86. Looking at him again, he is so quick to spot a little opening. Got a good block from Titans on the left side. Just accelerates and almost broke it to the outside for major yardage, but now you mentioned the three games he's missed this season. In the previous nine years, he had only missed three games. It's been a tough one with an ankle and a knee injury. First and ten from the 39-yard line. Dorsett behind Walker. Chased by Wilcher and then finally run down after a short game. And ahead of Dorsett had he been able to make the cut. And again, great pursuit by the Rams. He got a tremendous block from Herschel Walker. Walker just wiped out Leroy Irvin. And what can you say? I guess he can do everything. We know he's a great receiver. 62 receptions coming into tonight. A million or so yards in the USFL before he got here. Just the absolute perfect football player. And he seems to fit in anywhere and relatively happy about it, although there has been some strange rumors flowing out of Dallas. We'll talk about it later. Second down and eight from the 31-yard line. No score, early first quarter. 
Kalur takes a deep drop and sets up the screen for Walker. And Herschel rides Newsom out of bounds with him up at the 43-yard line. Strong is another superlative we left out for Herschel Walker. He just carried Newsom. Little screen pattern. Kalur looking downfield. You see the screen set up by the lineman. Then they move out in front. And Newsom, who is a good, hard-hitting and a fine tackler, just cannot take Walker down. And Walker, who was hit just over the line of scrimmage, gets five yards out of it. Third and five. Eight minutes remaining, first quarter. In a vital game for the Cowboys, and an important one for the Rams. Shotgun. yard touchdown return by Irvin his sixth reception of the year Pelour looked at him early and long Irvin read it within a full sprint and he timed that out absolutely beautifully let's take a look at it again there goes Tony Hill sets up now that ball has got to be delivered when he sets up otherwise Irvin who was back off about four or five yards would never be able to get back to him but Pelour Looked downfield, was late getting it there. Irvin caught it on the dead run, and the Rams score quickly and very early. Lansford to attempt the point after, and that's good. And a little deja vu for the Cowboys, in as much as in the playoff game last year, Irvin picked off a pass and ran it back 55 yards. What a fine defensive back he has turned into over the years. There was a question early in his career whether he had ever become a starter. No question about this. He was right in front of Tony Hill. Pelour had looked downfield and then fired over there. He was very late getting it back to his wide receiver Hill, and Irvin was there, and he took it all the way. The fight for the playoffs is on. The L.A. Raiders' Marcus Allen leads the charge into Seattle to battle the rival Seahawks on ABC's Monday Night Football tomorrow. Steve Pelour, and there's no question he knows that was his. He had looked downfield and looked over to Tony Hill and way too late delivering the ball there, and it was an easy interception touchdown return by Leroy Irvin, and that is going to shake this youngster. Lansford kicks off, and it's flat from the five. And another good run back for Clack as he brings it out to the 30. Okay, in case you missed any of the scores today, a quick review. Giants look great. San Francisco beats the Jets. Chicago routes Tampa Bay. Flutie ran for a score, threw for another. Cleveland stays hot. Kansas City beats Denver by 27. The Bengals route New England by 24. Minnesota still alive for a wild card berth. Indianapolis finally wins. Miami holds on to beat New Orleans by four. St. Louis and Philadelphia go to an overtime tie. San Diego routes Houston. Pittsburgh knocks off the Lions. Here, 7-0 L.A., first and 10, Dallas from the 30-yard line. Walker behind a block from Newsom and picks up the first down, an 11-yard gain to the 41-yard line as Walker is paired now with Newsom in this offensive set. Super block by Timmy Newsom right out in front of Herschel Walker, and Walker reads it perfectly. Watch top of your screen, number 30. There it is, good block. Drops the linebacker, Wilcher, and then out to the outside and almost got by the Ram cornerback but he does get the first down. And what they had done, as you look at Walker, is put Dorsett out wide that time. Now Tony comes out of the game, or comes back into the game as the sole running back in this set. And they put Walker in motion from the 42-yard line. Kalur stepping up, throwing, incomplete, intended for Doug Cosby. I was going to say the seldomly used tight end, but I guess we would say more seldomly used than in the past, Frank. That's because they use Herschel Walker, much like a tight end. They move him all over the place in the new offense of the Cowboys, directed by Paul Hackett, who is a former offensive coordinator up at the San Francisco 49ers. Cosby's production well under what it's been over the past couple of years. And speaking of production, this man's production is way up. Over 1,500 yards into the night, well in command of the NFL rushing lead thus far in the season. Second and 
and 10 from the 42-yard line. Walker in motion. Dorsett both closing quickly as he gets to the 45. And that will set up a third and seven with six and a half minutes to play in the quarter. Interesting, Al, you were referring to Pelour and Danny White a moment ago. And Danny White was a starter until he broke his wrist. He started five games. He averaged over 30 points for this team. Pelour has started seven. The Cowboys have averaged 17 and a half points. And there's also been about a 50-yard per game differential in output from Pelour to White. They do miss Danny White. It's a very complex offense under Paul Hackett. White had it down. Pelour obviously is not. Third and seven from the shotgun at the 45-yard line. And it's batted down, and Pelour catches his own pass and then throws deep on a bizarre play, but flags are down. Can't do and it twice. Incomplete. You cannot do that. It's the second forward pass. He'll get a pass reception. Illegal forward pass. Second forward pass. Illegal forward pass. Loss of down. Fourth down. That was fun. He gets a pass attempt, a pass completion, and a pass reception, but he can't do it twice. A little shaky early in the game is Steve Pleur. I would think that he perhaps knew that, but at least it was one way to get rid of it. Sean Miller batted it up in the air. There he looks deep downfield. He looked oh so good. It was so ripe down there. He looked so open. Mike Sherrard. But it brings up fourth down. <laughs> Fourth and seven from the 45, and Saxon to kick again. Henry Ellard, terrific at running back kicks his first three years in the league, but again because of the late start, still rounding into punt returning form. And won't even have a chance with this one, which is down by Bates at the 20-yard line. Quick party. The ABC, we've got one. <laughs> You need some help with that acceptance speech? I've been working on it for years. Will you lower taxes? <laughs> Guaranteed. You're my guy. 7-0 Rams. I'll Five. also tell all. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Bring that ballot back. <laughs> First down, Rams from the 21-yard line. Rams ahead 7-0 on a Leroy Irvin 50-yard interception return. Eric Dickerson plows straight ahead and gets out to the 24. And Jeff Rohrer, the Yaley, makes the tackle. Comes up with a football, but the play had been whistled dead to his chagrin. Now a little more John Robinson on his quarterback, Jim Everett, the rookie from Purdue, that they gave away half the franchise for. A couple of ones, a five, and a couple of pretty good football players. He said, I never believed a quarterback had to be very tall. He didn't believe in height. He said, but then I realized I never had a tall one. Everett now is 6'5". All of a sudden, John Robinson loves a tall quarterback. He said it just is so much better for them, which should have hit him a little earlier in life, wouldn't you think, after 25 <laughs> years of coaching? He is really high on this youngster. Second and eight from the 23. Everett going deep. Intended for Kevin House, and that pair linked up for a 60-yard touchdown against the Jets last week as the Rams moved to a 17-3 victory. Meanwhile, there is Steve Bartkowski. Remember when this season started, it was going to be a battle between Bartkowski and Dieter Brock. Brock was hurt in preseason. Bartkowski was hurt early in the year. Then they went with Dills and Bartkowski. Then they traded for Everett. He learned the ropes, and... Now it's Everett for the next, uh, what did Robinson say, half century? Bills beat the Bears, but that's the story, the history of the Rams. They've always had quarterback problems and controversies, and this young man, number 11, may have settled that for a long time to come. On third down, eight, pressure. Everett unloads, and House can't make the catch out at the 35-yard line. Jim Jeffcoat, that time, came roaring through to force the Aaron throw. And Randy White, watch 54, Randy White and Jeffcoat. That's Jeff Goat, 77, White in the middle. Now, he's working against Newberry. Jeff Goat is there. Here comes Randy White, and Everett had to deliver it. He did that, avoided the sack, and also threw it well away from the defender, avoiding the interception. That's Gordon Banks, who ran back kicks in the USFL prior to joining the Cowboys, and a good kick by Hatcher, taken by Banks at the 30, to the 40, and out to the 46-yard line. 
and written down there by Jerry Gray after a 16-yard run back following a 47-yard punt. 7-0 Rams. And as you look at those numbers and read it off, even more importantly, at the time Danny was injured, the Cowboys were 6-2, and two, and he was the leading passer in the National Football Conference. Things have changed dramatically. Then they lost two games. They felt they should not have lost. They lost 17 to 14 of the Giants, 17 to 13 of the Raiders, and the wheels have since come off. First down from the 46, out of the eye for the first time tonight. And the deep drop and pressure as Pelour squirts out. Nifty bit of running here. And Pelour gets into Rams territory and takes a shot at the 48-yard line. But some nice improvisation as Reggie Doss and Carl Eckern combined to knock him down. Very impressive moving around. He is a good athlete. Now watch him get in trouble early. Walker is blocking to the outside. <laughs> Mercer Walker has not done a whole lot of that as he was pounded by number 58 Mel Owens and then Pelour improvises rather well here. Probably with panic in his eyes at this moment and then he takes quite a shot from Reggie Doss 71 and Carl Eckern number 55 but he does get six yards out of it. Second down four from the 48 yard line and it's Dorsett forward shy of the first down by about a yard and pushed back at the 45. <laughs> Jerry Gray with a hurdle tackle there and a rapidly developing football player Jerry Gray now in his second year out of Texas he was the one who really set the keynote effort a week ago against the Jets when they beat the Jets in Giants Stadium. Wesley Walker was going in for a touchdown you recall Allen Jerry Gray unloaded him on him in the one yard line knocked the ball Lewis Cromwell got it in the end zone and it really was a 14 point swing the Jets would have got the touchdown the Rams drove the length of the field and scored within three minutes certainly and credited all to, Jer to Jerry Gray certainly the key play of the first half Chandler and Goldinger are the tight ends Goldinger normally a guard but he's eligible on this play as the pass goes to Newsom and he makes the catch at the 20 yard line Wilcher put the pressure on on the blitz on third down and one and they spring Newsom out of the backfield and it turns out to be quite a call. Rams do not blitz often and they do not do it well. They like to lay back and keep you in front of them. Here they come. They bring Wilcher number 54. They also brought the opposite linebacker. Pelura gets hit but not only was Newsom wide open had he been able to get it deep to a side end cause but he was standing there yelling and screaming for it and it was a good effort by Pelour to get the ball to Newsom. The Cowboys in that pattern did not have enough people back to provide all the blocks. So on third and one, they gain 26 and give it to Walker and Herschel finds room inside the 10, first and goal at the five. Run down by Vince Newsom. Oh, he is so special. The big man, 223 pounds, got a good block over on the left side, and then he just explodes. He is so big, he is so deceiving, and it's going to take a lot of backs in the NFL a long time to watch this man before they get used to that speed. A terrific block out in front by Kerr. Splits that gap right there. Accelerates behind another block by Tony Hill. And then just goes down in the arms of Vince Newsom. But not until he gets almost to the five-yard line. He is something special. First and goal. Cowboys from the five. Just as well for Dallas that it was dropped because Walker wasn't going anywhere anyway. Second and goal in the five. So the Rams trying to be tough as usual deep in their own territory. They have been really difficult down there. That time they brought another blitz. They brought a safety blitz and it was Vince Newsom who hurried that pass forcing it before Pluer wanted to deliver it and forcing the incompletion. When the opposition has been inside the 10, the Rams have given up only six touchdowns this season in 20 tries, and that's a great defensive average. But this time it's Newsom in for the score. So much for averages. Mm -hmm. Dallas now coming back after that mistake by Pelour, which resulted in a Leroy Irvin touchdown. Let's take a look at it again. The offensive line just blowing out. Good block by Kerr once again, number 68. You saw the seal and Newsom right in behind it. But Dallas knows they have to win tonight. They'll have to win next week 
And Philadelphia, they have Chicago coming up. If they're going to be in the playoffs, they know they're going to have to win all three, or at least they feel they'll have to win all three. An impressive drive, the key play on the drive, that third and one pass to Timmy Newsom, who has become the forgotten man with Dorsett and Walker. As Septien, who started his career years ago with the Rams, kicks it through. So a big series for Timmy Newsom as the Cowboys tie it up with 2.04 to go in the quarter. 7-7. Short night tonight, Al. Very short. And we'll be with you again tomorrow at 9 Eastern time and 6 o'clock Pacific time if the fog lifts in Seattle as the Los Angeles Raiders take on the Seattle Seahawks. Both teams are still alive. The Seahawks uh, just barely in their quest for a wild card and a vital game for the Raiders. Denver course losing to Kansas City today. A win for the Raiders. Tomorrow night they're one behind. And for the Seattle Seahawks, well, they just know they have to win. They're much like Dallas. They have to win all three. And Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports returns 4.30 Eastern time. Our prime staple for years, and it features amateur boxing as the United States team takes on the Cuba team. Are you doing that? No, sir. <laughs> are you doing that? You are much traveled, huh, my man. We'll leave that in the capable hands of uh, Alex Wallo, and I believe Jim Lampley will be there. That has been a staple over the years. That's some great fights come out of that. Ron Brown and Charles White drop back for the Rams to receive the kick. Yeah, except the end. Puts it in the air. And Brown from the six-yard line. And the Olympic sprinter has no chance to get up ahead of steam and has run out of bounds with a little tussle ensuing at the 23-yard line. Steve Daossi, number 55, is in on the play. Take another look. Ron Brown getting hit as he goes out of bounds. Brown's had a hard time breaking anything big this year. Last year, of course, three returns for touchdowns. And that time, it was Daossi, the backup middle linebacker, that put the hit on Brown. Great speed, Al. You recall his gold medal in the 4 by 100 at the 84 Olympics. And he finished fourth, just missing out in the 100-meter final from the 23-yard line. Dickerson nearly slipping down and coming back the other way and then finally stopped after no gain out of the 23-yard line. And Jeffcoat that time leveled Everett. Dickerson used to doing that. In fact, he did that for a touchdown last week. Against the Jets. He has that great speed. As big as he is, he can still turn it on. Second down, 11. Lead in the first quarter. Tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Redden in motion. Redden to the 30. First down after the 35-yard line. And to show you the way the Rams go, Redden would now be their leading pass receiver this season. He's caught three tonight to go with those 21. Those his figures coming into tonight's game. And at 24 receptions, that's tops on the team. One more than the other running back, Dickerson. That time, Bates came on the blitz. He probably should have come out of that blitz because his man out of the backfield would have been Barry Redden. He was wide open, and he could have broken that off for much more. First and 10, L.A. from the 35-yard line. Everett. Going deep. Oh, yeah. And the catch is made at the 23 by Brown. He got inside Everson Walls and Ron Brown with a great speed and position and holding on. Well, oh, Evan, what a love affair this city already has with this quarterback, Jim Everett. Here is Brown with the great speed, but meanwhile, Everett was getting all the time in the world to get rid of that ball. The personal bodyguard, Dennis Hara, Newberry holding off Randy White, and it was a good effort by the wide receiver, Brown, but a perfectly thrown ball by Jim Everett. We'll be back. That's the end of the first quarter. From Anaheim, California, our ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new Go Anywhere Nissan Pathfinder. They're at your Nissan dealer now. 
So we start the second quarter at Anaheim Stadium. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford, game tied 7-7. First quarter ending on a 42-yard pass completion from Jim Everett to Ron Brown. And so the second quarter begins with L.A. at the Dallas 23, first and 10. Fake to Dickerson. And over the middle and knocked down at the last moment by Ron Fellows on a pass intended for Brown again. Let's take a look at it again. Ron Fellows looking for his fourth interception. Brown with that great speed and Everett again with all the time. He's just standing back there and he just did miss. Throwing it just a little behind had he led the pass just a little more. Brown had just a short step on Fellows. It was close but it would have had to have been perfect. On second and ten, Ellert split to the left, Brown to the right. Redden and Dickerson, the running backs with Redden in motion. And Everett steps up gets knocked down at the 23 as he gets back to the line of scrimmage and caught from behind by Jeff Coe. That really is not the long suit of Jim Everett, although he is fairly slippery back there. He does get back to the line of scrimmage. There are the first quarter numbers. Of course, the one turnover by Dallas, a Pelour interception by Leroy Irving that he took 50 yards for a touchdown. Key item there. And the Rams was six yards rushing and 66 passing. Very un-Rams like. But that's the difference Everett's made. Well, in the playoffs, it was a 3-0 lead by the Rams. Turned into a 20 nothing blowout and 248 yards by this man. On third and 10, Dickerson can only get it to the 20 and thus will have about a 37-yard field goal attempt coming up. Jeffcoat making the tackle, and here comes Lansford. You know, that's what frustrates. Ram fans and it has for John Robinson for many years he will depend on a Dickerson in a third and ten situation like that and he is a big playmaker on a third and ten but it's kind of frustrating for Ram fans who maybe aren't quite as sophisticated in the knowledge of this game as John Robinson they don't like to see that they want to see the ball put in the air all he does as I said earlier though is win Lansford trying to put it in the air a 37 yard attempt Steve Dills to hold kick is good. That's good. probably what he had in mind. Rams have the lead again. 10-7, early second quarter. Robert Levette and Daryl Clack. Clack's had a couple of good runbacks tonight. The rookie out of Arizona State. And Levette in preseason, Al, you recall, was sensational. And both of those fellas might have seen more action were it not for the fact that the Cowboys, when they had the opportunity, went out and signed Herschel Walker. Lansford to kick off. And at the nine-yard line, it's Robert Levesque to the 20. Threads his way out to the 33-yard line. And the Cowboys begin their next drive from that point a minute and 46 seconds into the second quarter out comes Pelour and today not a mention that Tony Hill was questionable tonight he has been playing he is, of course is perhaps the best of the wide receivers of the Cowboys has many Cowboy records he is suffering from diverticulitis but he is playing they've been hurt all year that's Hill in the slot number 80 When you look at statistics and all of the numbers, and sometimes they can be confusing when you look at a quarterback and percentage and ratings and the rest, but a good rule of thumb when you look at a quarterback is to look at touchdown passes thrown and interceptions. And to show you the difference with the Cowboys, Danny White has thrown 12 TD passes and had five interceptions. Palour has thrown five touchdown passes and now plus one tonight, 13 interceptions. And there it is, the Irvin would be number 13 on the year. Marked contrast, second and eight from the 35-yard line as Pelour throws to Sherrard at the 50-yard line and he's run down at the 42. And there's your number one draft choice out of UCLA and he's a beauty. He made a good move on Leroy Irvin. Unlike Tony Hill earlier in the game when the ball was picked off, Sherrard made Irvin buy the fact that he was going deep. Here's Pelour looking. Meanwhile, 
Sherrard has put a good strong move on Irvin. You saw Irvin. He was still backing up when that ball was almost to Sherrard. And that was because the youngster out of UCLA had given him a hard drive to the inside that Irvin bought all the way. First and 10 at the 42-yard line after a 23-yard pickup. Sherrard goes in motion. Dorsett, good hold. Good game to the 33. Tony Dorsett. It's time to really appreciate what he's done. A year that started out in a bizarre way for Tony with the signing of Walker and people questioning whether or not the Cowboys would would have as much use for Dorsett or whether he was getting old or just what. But he's been hurt this season, so it's not a typical Dorsett year, but when he's healthy, runs as well as he always has. Second and one, and Walker gets the first down to the 29-yard line. Big man just crawling over blockers to get the first down. And again, starting for the second time tonight, as he did Thanksgiving Day against Seattle, in which the Cowboys were whomped pretty good. The question being, of course, can he block? But in the Cowboys game plan, the fullback needs to block all right, and Herschel is a great athlete. If he doesn't do it now, he'll do it tomorrow. But they also use that fullback so often as a pass receiver, and Herschel is already just a flat, great pass receiver. Walker slot right. First down from the 29-yard line. Fake to Dorsett. Swing it out here to Gerard for a short gain. Leroy Irvin had him out of bounds. Jim Dent of the Dallas Times Herald had the story this week talking of Walker, and it got a lot of play. Herschel saying if he gets bored with something, he'd quit. The implication being that uh, maybe he'll get bored and maybe he'll spend only one year from the Cowboys. But the one thing about Walker, he does like to philosophize. He will give you a little philosophy. Well, earlier in the year, we were talking about we thought he at one time wanted to be an FBI agent. He said, maybe I still do. So he doesn't confirm it or deny it. He just philosophizes about his future. And expands here and there. Second and eight from the 27. And incomplete as Walker can't hold on. It will be third down and eight. Interesting contrast between Walker and the way that he will expand on most any subject you give him. And, of course, the man he plays under, Tom Landry. Tom Landry... Well, he is a very personable person. I used to play under him when he was coached with the Giants, but he doesn't give you a whole lot of extra words. Mm -hmm. There he is, now in his 27th year. He said he's going to coach this game as long as he's happy with it. I asked him today about it. He said, I'm still happy with it. He said, I don't know what happened. He's very open, very candid, very honest. And in the last couple of weeks, he has no idea what happened. He was blown away first by Seattle. Just been devastating the last two weeks as Washington also killed him. Mm -hmm. Third and eight from the shotgun. And the screen is set up for Dorsett, and nothing happens to develop that one as Mark Giroux, the Rams' leading tackler, adds another. The man who took Jim Collins' place in the linebacking core. Collins out for the season. And as much as anything, Giroux, along with the development of Jerry Gray, has solidified this Rams' defense as third in the NFL into tonight. Collins was a great Pro Bowl linebacker. And Gary Green at left corner was a Pro Bowl linebacker. He had to retire because of neck injury. But Jerry Gray and Mark Drew have just played outstanding football for this defensive unit. Set the end, a 48-yard attempt. And Raphael, who kicked as a rookie for the Rams in 1977 and then went to Dallas in 78, has not had a field goal attempt in the last two weeks. And this one is good. And so Septien, who had been erratic of late, boots one through from 48, and we're tied at 10, 9.24 till the half. The fight for the playoffs is on. The L.A. Raiders' Marcus Allen leads the charge into Seattle to battle the rival Seahawks on ABC's Monday Night Football tomorrow. Septian, a 48-yarder, the longest of his career, 53 yards, and that's something that he's accomplished twice. Meanwhile, the Rams with Charles White, the former Heisman Trophy winner, and Ron Brown, the Olympic gold medalist. Septian to kick off. Tied 10-10. Bouncing to it. 
kick and out of bounds, and they'll kick again from the 30. A little hook shot by Septien. You, you touched on a moment ago, a little shaky in recent weeks. Good football game. Rams and Dallas, and of course, so much on the line. The 49ers here in the NFC West beat the Jets this afternoon. They're 8-5-1. The Rams need a win tonight to say figuratively a game and a half ahead of the 49ers, and even if they lose tonight, they could still win the next two, and we are going to bring you the final game for the Rams and the 49ers on Friday, December the 19th, and of course for Dallas, they just feel they have to win all three of them, and if they can win all three of these games, they will get in as a wild card. Pretty demanding. They have Philadelphia and Chicago left, however, and what was it, 44 to nothing a year ago by the Bears? Absolutely. Played some wild games last year. Big wins and big, big losses. And again, they finished with Chicago, but in a game that uh, if the Cowboys win tonight and beat Philadelphia will be far more important to Dallas, obviously, than to the Bears. And it will be played at Irving. Brown from the five. Behind a big wedge. Fumbles the ball out of the 27-yard line. And the Rams maintain possession. Even though it's Fowler who comes up with the football, Garth Jacks put the hit that time on Brown, and the Rams were able to recover. Todd would give you a little bit of an argument on that. We'll look at it from the reverse angle. Here's what Brown does well. And sooner or later, he's going to pop one. He hits the gap. And just ease up a little bit. Tripped up there by Garth Jacks, the linebacker, and the ground cannot Ooh. cause the fumble, and that's exactly what happened. Rams first and 10 from the 27 yard line and it's Dickerson and Dickerson just in case you had forgotten picks up eight they've been going to the air a lot tonight and not using much of Eric but uh, you do not forget about number 29 if you're the Cowboys what do they say about the Rams offense they just run Dickerson if it doesn't work they run him again <laughs> and if it doesn't work they run him still another time and pretty soon it's going to work Gain of nine, his numbers last year, the 248, a playoff record. Rams won that game 20 to nothing. Red resets in the backfield, and Everett's going to throw, and it's complete to the 40-yard line, and Henry Ellard rolls up to the 41, shot there by Everson Wall. That's what they love about Jim Everett. He changed that play at the line of scrimmage. He read the man-for-man -man defense, although he knows he's going to get a lot of man-for-man -man from the Cowboys. They play a great deal of it, but whatever he had called, he looked up there, and he knew he had single coverage against Everson Walls. Changed it up, fired it out, gets the first down. First and 10, L.A. at its own 41-yard line. Dickerson. And they stop him after a gain of one. Rohrer and Hegman, the outside backers, converge for the tackle. Mike Hegman, 11th year at a Tennessee State, where he was a teammate in college of Tutal. There he is. He's been looking at him for a lot of years because he plays right behind him. Dickerson now, 18 yards, six carries. If you're going to beat the Rams, you have to stop him. Thus far, they've been able to do that. On second down, they stop him again as Dickerson picks up another yard, and it will be third down and eight. Randy White, number 54, in on the tackle. Everett looking over toward the bench. Plays are called. By Dick Corey and Bruce Snyder. Picks it up. They signaled it in. Third down and long. And the Rams this time. The two wide receivers set to the left and one to the right out of the shotgun on third down and eight. And Everett throws and it's complete. And a first down to Darren Long, number 45, a rookie out of Cal State Long Beach. Activated from injured reserve last week to replace Mike Boomin on the roster. And he played for the LA Express in the USFL. And I know Everett knew there was going to be the full blitz. It was a safety blitz. They brought everyone except Landry. They picked it up. Good block, top of your screen by Dickerson to pick off. Holloway, the safety blitz, and Everett, very cool, very calm, gets the completion, another first down. You like 
what you see every time you look at this youngster. Dickerson on first and 10. Picks up three to the 43. Too tall Jones to tackle. What begins to happen when you can throw the football like the Rams now can throw the football to the outside. Those cornerbacks, Everson Walls on one side, Fellows on the other, they have to think pass before they can think run against the Rams. That's not been the case for the past few years. They weren't concerned about the pass because the Rams had no one to get it out there. No one as effectively as Jim Everett. Now they have to think pass. Therefore, they can't come up and force the run of Dickerson back to the inside. And sooner or later, Dickerson's going to break a big one. Second and a long six. Fellows with the coverage on the play. Good strong arm exhibited right there by Everett. That time Everett just a little late releasing it. House had made the break and Everett had plenty of smoke on it. Well thrown ball just a little late on the delivery and he has not worked that much with House. House coming in late just a few weeks ago after being released by Tampa Bay and formerly their number one receiver down there. But he was just off a little bit on the timing. House and Brown go wide left, and Ellard comes to the right. Shotgun. Third down. Long six. Everett ducks it off for Redden. 30 to the 22-yard line. He waited and waited, and finally Redden got three underneath, and they've got another first down. Everett. John Robinson said is slippery. He's not one of your great athletes, but he's slippery. If he were a 10-year-old playing tag, he would never be it. That's the way John Robinson characterized his movement in the backfield. Now, he does slip away from the pass rush. And more than that, he kept his cool, getting away from Randy White, the last Dallas pass rusher, and just dumping the ball off and getting it to Redden. And so Everett saved a big loss and turns it into a Ram first down at the Cowboys 22. Redden has caught four already in this half. First and 10 of the 22 yard line. Everett to the end zone. Touchdown. Wow. Henry Ellard. Did he rifle that? Optional receiver. Perfectly thrown ball. It had to be right where he put it, or he'd have been out of bounds, or it'd have been picked off. Great confidence on the part of this youngster. Totally unflappable back there also. Now the pressure, he begins to feel it, he had to let it go, and he threw the ball off balance. And what a beautiful spiral if you're into the aesthetics of this game. <laughs> that was a tremendous individual effort. Great move by Ellard to keep that second foot down. Ellard on the right, House on the left. The Rams have a totally new dimension to their offense. Lansford's kick is good. Official right there to call it as Ellard had to get that second foot down in the end zone after a 22-yard touchdown reception. And the Rams, for the third time tonight, have the lead. Ellard held out to almost mid-season. He made a great move down here, but again, you can see Everett looking for receivers, looking for receivers, and then all of a sudden spotting Ellard and throwing it absolutely perfect after just a quick glance. That was remarkable. Henry Ellard. Good catch and a touchdown, and Everett has now thrown five touchdown passes, and three of them have gone to Ellard, who again was a holdout this half of the regular season. 17-10 L.A., a short lance for kick, fielded up at the 16 by Levette. And he's out to the 30-yard line. It's 4.46 to play in the first half. Everett has really turned on this sellout crowd. As a matter of fact, this crowd has been sold out. The stadium sold out now for three weeks. And it all happened after Everett came off the bench against New England through three touchdown passes. They lost a football game, but they discovered what they feel is going to be a franchise quarterback. And then, of course, in his last two starts, he has been a winner. Some of his teammates call him Eddie Haskell. <laughs> Dennis Harrod nicknamed him Blade. The long, angular face. He has really fit in. Perfectly. First and 10, Dallas from the 30. Palua resetting the backfield, and 
to the extent that there's confusion and a timeout. Fleur had to take timeout. His 30-second clock to tick down to two seconds. And this is one of the most frustrating things that can happen to a coach. And Tom Landry, you can read his lips. What happened? Mm. With the plays are called by the Dallas Cowboys. Paul Hackett, the Tom Landry has a little earpiece that he is in touch with Paul Hackett, the new offensive coordinator, as, as the Cowboys put in a new offense at the beginning of this year, much like the 49ers go at it. The Boca West Club in Boca Raton, Florida, is the site. The Chrysler Team Invitational featuring the top PGA golfers, and that comes your way this Saturday at 2.30 Eastern here on ABC. Steve Pelour, University of Washington, paid the price in the game against San Diego the last time Pelour visited Southern California, about 100 miles down the road, wound up on his back 11 times. Meanwhile, up north in Seattle, under the Kingdom tomorrow night, we'll be with you for Monday Night Football. The L.A. Raiders taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Kurt Warner, Marcus Allen, a great running backs tomorrow night. First and 10 from the 30-yard line, Cowboys. Rams lead 17-10. And with Dorsett in motion, the pitch goes to Walker, and there's nothing there. Gray came up from the corner to bump him out of bounds. Jerry Gray has turned into an exceptional cornerback. Came up, had the good force, got support on the inside from Mel Owens. Tough Rams defense. They don't do anything sophisticated, nothing fancy down there. They seldom blitz. They play a lot of zone. They play it very tough. They keep people in front of them. And sooner or later, they get the interception or they get the deflection. It's a relatively anonymous defense, not quite the way Miami was with a no-name defense, but just a whole bunch of guys working very well together. No one particular standout. Second and 15. Pelour throws against the grain for Hill. Leaps can't make the catch as he went up for Jerry Gray. <laughs> Tough pass to you. Running away, throwing back across your body. You leave that ball up in the air too long. There are a few players can do it. You think instantly, but John Elway with that powerful arm. Pelour, again under pressure, could have lost that very easily to Gray. Tried to get it to Hill. Hill saved the interception. But it's a tough one to try to get away with. Third down and 14. Dallas from the 26. Four minutes, 29 seconds remaining. First half. Rams 17, Cowboys 10. Renfro's in the game. Cowboys out of the shotgun. Pelour over the middle, and Renfro makes a juggling catch and has a first down at the 46 of the Rams. Johnny Johnson made the tackle. Nice play by Renfro to keep his concentration and hold on. And that time, Pelour, with the protection he needed, had all the time he wanted, and here comes Renfro with a good little move to the outside. Just froze Johnson for a second, broke back under the other, outside, the other wide receiver, Hill. Got a little bit of a screen off it, and it was a well-thrown ball by Pelour. Dallas at the 47 after a 27-yard pickup. Dorsett in motion. Pass goes out to Doug Cosby. He's out of bounds after a pickup of uh, three or four. First reception on the night for Cosby. and You can take a look at those numbers. He has been to the Pro Bowl three consecutive years in He's not playing any different. It's just the offense, as uh, put in by Paul Hackett, does not feature the tight end. And you will see an offense much like San Francisco. Russ Francis up there, he'll catch 25 or 30 a year, rather than 60. The fullback gets a lot of balls in this offense. First Walker came into the night with 62 receptions. Second down, six from the 43-yard line. For a set to the 41. Carl Eckert, number 55, the man who calls the defensive signals, 10th year man out of San Jose State, 
and he comes out here in this third down situation but in a way he really typifies this Ram defense solid and functional and enterprising but not a huge star like a Reggie Doss he does his job against the run he comes out they bring in Kevin Green the second year man from Auburn every time they see a pass situation they change people and they do it very effectively third and four shotgun at the 41 under three minutes left in the half and a flag is thrown and another flag is thrown on the pass to Gordon Banks there's a flag on the near sideline and one on the far side as well and Jim Tunney will give us the story there was movement in the line and Johnny Johnson had got into it with Banks so I think there will be two separate calls there are those flags were 50 yards apart that was a good effort by Pelour. He had Kevin Green right in his face. Good effort just to just get rid of it. Setting fouls. Pass interference offense number 84. Pass interference defense number 20. Play will be repeated. All set. So well away from the play, Doug Crosby on offense. And then the play itself with Johnny Johnson. And so we're back to third and four. Stay with their four down line, of course. Top of the screen, number 91, the second year pass rush with Kevin Green. Pelour flushed out, hit down at the 49. Credit Mike Wilshire for that one. They don't do it often, but they do it well when they do it. And if you have the wrong play calls, the Cowboys did. Not enough folks staying at home to pick up the Wilchers of the world. Four-man pass rush. And consequently, the loss. The game of chess. And the Cowboys just got made it. Mike Wilcher, fourth-year linebacker. He was the other linebacker at, at North Carolina. They call him the LT Lawrence Taylor of the West. <laughs> what a day Taylor had today. <laughs> Saxon to kick. Fair catch called for at the nine-yard line by Henry Ellard. Henry Ellard, fair catch at the nine-yard line. Keep right. Two-yard kick. Journalistic balance, but what a day the Giants had today. And they win over the Washington Redskins to pick up a first place in the NFC East. No equal time provision necessary when you look at the Giants today. And we'll take a look at highlights of that one and other games at halftime tonight. But the Giants thoroughly dominating Washington, intercepting six passes, and rolling to a 24-14 triumph. And Saylor, Taylor with what, three sacks on the day? that all over the place, block passes, yeah. running down ball carriers. He's playing like a man possessed, and indeed he is. He said, I'll let my play this year speak for itself. And how about it's Sims for the second week in a row? From the nine, it's Dickerson. Out to close to the 19, appears to be just shy of the first down. And the block that time, to Springham was thrown by Barry Redden, number 30, as we come upon the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go in a good first half. The Rams on top, 17-10. John Robinson in his fourth season with the Rams and trying to join some pretty good company. Paul Brown and Chuck Knox, the only two NFL coaches to reach the playoffs in each of their first four seasons. Knox did it five years in a row here, and they fired him. Yeah, that's right. Second and in inches from the 19-yard line. And Dickerson gets those inches out to the 20-yard line, tackled by Jim Jeffcoat. The Rams have all of their timeouts at their disposal, but they do not elect to use one here. Clock is restarted now and ticking down. 147, 146 and counting. Jeff Coat, the only one in his generation down there in that defensive line. Randy White, close to 34. Dutton, 35. Ed Jones, 35. 
first and ten from the 20. In the old days, they would definitely run the clock down, but these aren't the old days with Everett. Still, they keep it on the ground. It's Dickerson, and Dickerson takes it out to the 32. Now, are these the Rams of a few weeks ago or even the last couple of years? There's no question Robinson would sit on the lead and run that clock down, but now with an Everett and the way he's going, he's got some options. I'm a little surprised they are not going with, up with some kind of a two-minute offense. They aren't. Everett looking over to the sidelines, ticking down now to one minute. They could have had another play ready to go had they, they had the success that they just had. They've used a lot of time getting in and out of the huddle. Exactly, and there's a certain segment of the crowd that is booing. They don't like it, but now Everett's going to go to the air on first down from the 32-yard line. The 47 and out of bounds to stop the clock is Brown with 40 seconds. Everett again. He was looking deep. He wanted to go deep. And there was good coverage downfield. Checked it off. And again, so cool and so calm. Gets the completion to Ron Brown and also stops the clock. But they are inside Dallas territory. Now, you know they're going to think deep. They've got a man who can put it deep. And as you said, Al, that was not the case only a few weeks ago. It would have probably been Dickerson right up the middle. They have all three timeouts to use from the 48-yard line. Everett throws. Oh. Caught at the 34 and a great inside move by Brown. And saving the touchdown at the nine is Bill Bates. He put something on that ball. Brown appears to be shaken up on the sidelines, but Everett threw about a 25-yard out. And it was, you've heard the old cliche, a frozen rope. That was not a cliche on this one. Here is Brown. You have to respect his speed. Cowboys thinking he's going to take it into the end zone and driving Fellows deep. Fellows comes back to make the tackle and a good move by Brown to the inside and takes it all the way down inside the 10. But what a pass by Everett. Powerful arm. Brown goes off, as you can see, Brown with 100 yards receiving tonight, 38 on that last play. In the last two weeks, he had caught only one pass. You know, that's even off balance, but that's how he throws the football. He's just very strong, 6'5", 212-pounder, and Fellows, who had dropped back, playing deep against Brown, came up, slipped on the turf. Good move by Brown on the inside, and gets it down inside the 10. But this young man who is now making only his third start and he is something special the rams have used a timeout here the clock had been stopped anyway with 30 seconds the super bowl following the 1980 season and brown with 100 yards has outgained the cowboys cumulatively Brown and House and Ellard, and with Jim Everett and the kind of arm he has, well, Harry Dickerson can relax a little bit. He'll get his opportunity for many carries, but they no longer have to depend totally upon him. First and goal now from the nine. Redden in motion. Dickerson stays in the block, and the pass. Incomplete, intended for Ellard slipping along the back of the end zone, but well covered on the play. There is one he missed. Dave Hill was over on the left side, wide open, and he's going to make a mistake every now and then. Let's take a look at the coverage on Ellard. It's pretty thorough. He is wall to wall, if you will, and he tried to force it in there, and he could have lost it. Meanwhile, he missed a great opportunity over the left side, David Hill. But you get the feeling about this juncture, he is not going to miss many, and they are going to be fewer and far apart as his career goes on. Comes up in the shotgun on second and goal. And he throws that one out of the end zone. Nearest man was Michael Young, number 88, third and goal now, 19 seconds. Yeah, but that's okay. He threw it away. There was good coverage, and it pleases Johnny Robinson because he has always felt, and he's pretty candid about it, he wants a quarterback that's not going to beat us, not necessarily win for us. He wants a quarterback that is not going to lose the ball game for him, and ever threw that ball away, avoided the interception, comes back, and he can talk to John and load up again. 
So they take their second timeout and they'll conserve their final one with 19 seconds to play in the first half. Meanwhile, on the far side, Mike Hegman talks it over with Tom Landry. You know Landry about as well as anyone, Frank. Would you be surprised if, if he did not come back next year? I would be shocked and appalled. He still loves the game. Uh, Alicia's wife is very close to him. She has a great affection for football, for Tom. Very enthusiastic fan. The thing about Tom, he, he will never burn out of this game. He takes the game, keeps it in perspective. He has his entire life in perspective. Deeply religious man. He thinks and breathes with the Cowboys, but when he walks away, he walks away. And he has another life besides coaching football. A lot of coaches don't. A lot of people in a lot of different professions don't. He does. Can you see him coaching another five years? I can see him coaching another five years very easily. And, and they're not hurting him physically either because he's that kind of man. Oddly enough, now he's not the image that we've given him in television over the years. He has a great sense of humor. He has a lot of fun. He keeps, he keeps life in perspective. Just look at that American Express commercial. Third and goal from inside the 10. Everett scrambling, pump faking, and then throwing that one away, and it's fourth down. And Everett got leveled out of bounds after the play by Jeff Rohrer, but on fourth down, Robinson will have to settle for three. But again, it was a judicious move. And you saw Robinson telling him just that. He said, that's okay, Jim. Don't throw it in there. Don't get it intercepted. Don't lose this. The almost certain three points. Now, that's twice he had receivers covered, and he was very careful with it. He's young. He's also very bright. Lansford, chip shot, 27 yards to try to put the Rams on top by 10. 11 seconds to go in the half. And Lansford has kicked two field goals. And we have eight seconds to play now in the second quarter with the Rams on top by a score of 20 to 10. For the Rams, a victory would mean a game and a half advantage. And there's Georgia Frontieri. She works the sidelines about as good as any <laughs> owner we know around here. She kisses just about everyone, including the mascots down there before the game. Some major bushing going on. She is enthusiastic prior to the, uh, the fray tonight. I saw a couple of Rams double back. <laughs> Jim Everett, he's having quite a half. You know, the thing is, as we look at Jim Everett, everyone on this team likes this young man. When you talk to the personnel of the Rams, they say he is. He just fits in so beautifully. Hangs around with the defense. Hangs around with Eric Dickerson. He's kind of, kind of quiet in his own way. But he works with him. He'll work with him out after practice. I saw Dickerson out with the defensive back Nolan Cromwell playing miniature golf today at the hotel. They all seem to like him. He is a leader, and at a very young age, he understands rule number one: always pick up the offensive line's bar tab. You got it. Hang out with the big guys. Little ground ball kickoff that's covered at the 29-yard line by Mark Tuane. That's exactly what they wanted to happen. They don't get any possible return, and they didn't. So John Robinson saying you should be starting the clock here which they did not start. It was at eight, and now they've taken a second off it. And he's right. Complaining. It means one more play. Robinson saying that took one second from the time he, he touched it till the play was over. And he's telling them, watch for the lateral. Watch for the hook and trailer here. We were in the twilight zone for a moment. But meanwhile, it's simply a little off tackle by Walker, and that ends the first half to the delight of this sellout crowd at Anaheim Stadium in Orange County. Halftime score, Rams 20, Cowboys 10, and our special Sunday edition will return after this commercial and a message from your local station.
special Sunday edition of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by VCR Enterprises, makers of the VCR quarterback game. Warming up, he came on in the New England game three weeks ago, performed brilliantly, though the Rams did lose on that miracle pass to Irving Fryer at the end. And Steve Pelour trying to rally his troops now, down by 10, through a very costly interception in that first half. The 50-yard run back by Leroy Irvin. But it's been Everett's night so far in terms of the duel of quarterbacks and the Rams' night on the scoreboard. 20 to 10 as the Rams get set to receive the second half kickoff with Charles White and Ron Brown back to receive and Raphael set the end to kick off for the Cowboys. Here we go. Second half at Anaheim. Taken by White at the five. And a nice one-arm tackle by Todd Fowler at the 20-yard line. Fowler, second year back out of Stephen F. Austin. First and ten at the 20-yard line. The Cowboys were offside on the kickoff. Offside, Dallas, number 46, <laughs> five-yard penalty, re-kick. Maybe that's the reason Fowler was down there. He's the guy. Good way to get down there early. Rams, of course, want to watch him kick it again because they actually had a very good wedge set up. You saw Charlie White go down, pound the turf. If he would have stayed inside, he could have turned out into a big number. The turnover, the key thing there. It came early. Pelour trying to go to Tony Hill. Irvin reading it all the way and taking it 50 yards for the touchdown. And the Rams mixing up their offense. That's unusual. But the, uh, the other news, Frank, that we're just receiving is not good for the Rams. Ron Brown has a separated shoulder. He made that catch, and you saw him grimace and come off the field, and the report is a separated shoulder, and that obviously means we don't see him for the balance of the night. And we'll try to get an update as to what they anticipate in terms of his return, but that's a big loss. And that could keep him out for some time. It, of course, depends on the severity of it. From the 30 now, set the end to kick off again. And White fields in the 13. And he brings it back out to the 31-yard line. And they'll start from there and some extra shoving. And pushing, but no markers down. These two teams have met more than any other two teams in playoff competition. They're eight times going back to the early 70s. Four and four, but the last time they met, it was a 20 to nothing blowout by the Rams, and it was a day in which Dickerson rolled for 248 yards. The Cowboys have been able to shut that off, but all of a sudden they're looking at something new in the form of Jim Everett, this man right here. First and ten from the 32-yard line with Redden in motion. Fake pitch to Dickerson and the toss to Ellard. And he's run down at the 38-yard line. So the Rams now, with Brown gone, will use Ellard. We will see a lot of Kevin House. In fact, what the Rams had done, they wouldn't announce something like House has taken Brown's starting role, but it became evident last week that House was going to see a lot more action anyway. What Brown will do, of course, with his being on the shelf now, will be severely decrease their depth in terms of wide receivers. Fragile egos. You don't hurt him, you just say, well, we're going to use him a little more. You'll see more of him. Second and five, Redden takes it out to the 42-yard line. Redden has already gained more yards this season than in any other year in his career. When he was drafted the year before Dickerson, it appeared that he would be the Rams' great running back of the future, but the following season, along came the chance to get Eric. Redden has been reduced to the other back and the blocking back and still would like to be traded. Oh, would he? would like to run the football. I don't know whether he wants to be traded or not. Says he does occasionally, but he had 1,600 yards as a senior at Richmond. He'd like to carry the football, but he's not going to carry it as long as Dickerson, this man, is helping. And Dickerson gets 
gets the first down after the 44-yard line. Michael Downs in on the tackle. First down. Hey, what Redden really does well, and it gets better every time you watch him. He's a terrific blocker and also a good receiver. Everson Downs, one of those 1981 free agents, along with Michael Downs. Back there in the pass defense, it was rated number one in the NFL coming out of the 13th week. First and 10 at the 44. Pouch in motion. Dickerson. And from behind, Randy White rides him down. Gain of about three. Second and seven. Nine straight Pro Bowls, and he still plays the game as Stanislavski would have loved it. Full method player. Everything intensity out there. You can just read it up here. Moving along, however, he will be 34 shortly. Over on the other side, Dutton is 35. Ed Jones is 35. They're playing well, but they have got to start thinking sometime soon about bringing other people in there. Kevin Brooks from Michigan, a first-round draft pick of a year ago. He was expected to see a lot of action this year. The injury in preseason, so he has not seen much. Smerick is also injured early. But there will be a changing of the guard in the not-too-distant future for the Dallas Cowboys. Second and seven. Rams at their own 47. We're three minutes into the third quarter. Rams lead 20 to 10. Dickerson to the 49 of Dallas. It'll be third and three. Tackled by Jeff Rohrer. Dickerson's on a pace right now. He's averaging 117 yards per game. And if he kept this up, he'd wind up with the fourth best year ever for a running back. He, of course, is number one at 21.05. O.J. Simpson at 2003 and 73. Earl Campbell, 1934 in 1980. And a timeout is taken here by the Rams, and then Dickerson will be fourth. But Everett has to call time with the Rams ahead 20 to 10. Anaheim Stadium, Anaheim, California. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford, our special Sunday edition with the Rams leading Dallas 20 to 10. And as play resumes, the Rams have the football at the Dallas 49, third and three. You know, Al, pre-Jim Everett, you can almost count on a Dickerson run. You'll probably get it anyway, but John Robinson has a new toy now. We could see some play action, and Everett put it in the air. is the sole running back and he gets it on a draw and he tried to make it look as if he'd go to the new toy or let the new toy fling one downfield but it's Dickerson for a minimal gain and the punting unit has to come in good defensive play by both Randy White and Jeff Coach short of the first down probably should have played with his new toy Give himself something underneath short. Give himself something deep for the touchdown. Other than that, they end up punting. Gordon Banks at the 10. Dale Hatcher to kick. Oh. And it's dead at the 10. As the ball took a backward bounce from the 6-yard line. A 39-yard kick. So it doesn't do a great deal for the gross average. But it does do a great deal for the Rams defense pinning Dallas deep. And the Cowboys for the first time have the ball at their own 10. The first time here in the second half. Ten and a half minutes to play. You just joined us in the third quarter. Anaheim Stadium. Rams on top 20 to 10. The Rams have had the lead on three separate occasions tonight. 7-0, 10-7. And they went ahead 17-10 and now 20 to 10. Herschel or uh, Tony Dorsett runs into a group barely after crossing the line of scrimmage. Reggie Doss came out of Hampton Institute nine seasons ago. Watch him leave now. <laughs> 30th birthday. Happy birthday to you, Reg. 3-0. He doesn't mind. 
It's sort of like Paul Revere's horse. You don't hear much of him. <laughs> but he comes out anytime it looks like it might be passed. He's in there against the run, and they bring in Gary Jeter, who is in there in any situation that might mean the Cowboys are going to put the ball in the air. Second and ten. And Pelour down to the seven-yard line. Doug Reed was the guy who got it started, and then Gary Jeter finished them off. Excellent coverage downfield by that Rams secondary. Again, we talked about it earlier tonight. Not a whole lot of hero big names or at least nationwide back there, but they are very good. They play an old-fashioned defense for the most part. As Leroy Irvin said, high school, Pop Warner, whatever you want to call it, we are effective. We keep everyone underneath us and we stay close. That time, Pelour just had no place to put it. Chased out of the pocket, consequently the loss. Third and 13 out of the gun from the Dallas 7. You've got to throw that ball away somehow. Had to know exactly where you were. Jeter and Green, the two pass rush specialists, and the two men who lead the team in sacks. Green came in with seven. Jeter came in with seven. Right here, Bloor knows I'm in trouble. Now he knows he's in deep trouble. Get rid of it. Behind a cowboy somewhere, put it in the ground. He had a lot of time to get rid of it. Jeter covers him right there with Kevin Green, two points. And it's a tough play because you also have to give the ball back to the Rams. You kick away from your 20-yard line, and Tom Landry is saying, give me a break, son. You have to get rid of that football. We talked about some of the problems the Cowboys have had with Pelour at quarterback, and I think this is probably the most aggravated I've ever seen with one of his quarterbacks. And he did give him a little confirming pat as he walked away, but he is hot. He knew the Pelour had to get rid of that football. He could have saved the two points. But again, they have struggled with Pelour, whereas they were 6-2 and two until Danny White got hurt. He was the number one passer in the league. So much of your problems right now is worrying number 16. That's Danny White, by the way, on the left talking to Pelour. Tom also looked like a man who was watching the season slip away. They feel, and probably right, they have to win tonight. And they also have to beat Philadelphia and then the Chicago Bears. That's rather ambitious, but if they win them all three, they will be in the playoffs. Free kick and not a good one by Saxon. A bouncing kick fielded at the 32 by Ellard. And Ellard takes it out to midfield and crosses the 50. And it'll be first and 10 at the Cowboy 49 with the Rams on top, 22 to 10. Rams have always had a strong defense. This year it is very strong. And they have now got an offense that's going to be a little bit spooky in this NFC West. I'm sure the 49ers, big winners today over the Jets, looking on tonight, hoping that that final confrontation on Friday the 19th that we'll bring you will be the determining factor. If the Rams win tonight and they win next week, they will win their second consecutive division. Michael Young is one of three wide receivers with Brown out. And it's Everett. And the old cliche comes to mind, escape dimension. <laughs> and there's Gary Jeter, former number one draft pick of the Giants, played for John Robinson. The Giants traded him away here a few years ago. And it was thought a couple of years ago his career might be over. He had back surgery, disc surgery. And it's far from over. He's in there on every pass play, replacing Reggie Doss. And if anything, he's better than he's been in the past. Picked him up in 83 from the Giants in exchange for a third round pick. Fairly cheap. Yeah. Second and eight from the 47. Dickerson, nothing doing. No game. Too tall Jones makes the stop. It'll be third down and eight with eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Alice is doing what they set out to do and talking with Landry today. The key he felt was to hold Dickerson under 100 yards. They have been handling Dickerson rather well. They've been making their own mistakes. 
Fleur throwing the 50-yard interception return, taking the safety down there a moment ago. And they are just playing an awfully tough Graham defense. Dickerson, only 57 yards this far. Third and eight. Pass caught and close to a first down. Darren Long makes his second catch of the night. Again, Long is the fella out of Cal State Long Beach with USFL experience, reactivated off the injured reserve list. And Tunney wants the change brought out. And the crowd is already telling Robinson what they want the Rams to do, even if they come up a little short here on the measurement. Rams can be about as good a ball control team as you're going to find in this game today. That, of course, is reflected with Eric Dickerson as they bring the chains out. If anything, they perhaps are maybe getting a little too conservative. They had a third and three a while ago. They sent Dickerson over the left side held short they wound up getting two points out of it so you can't say it was wrong but they could have gone to something a little more colorful and perhaps kept the ball alive and got in for the touchdown that's what they're going to need for the first time but John Robinson is conservative he's also very successful great career at USC when he had a great defensive ball club almost every year four times they led the Pac-10 during his tenure there and he always always had that one great running back the one back that would keep the ball in the hands of the Trojans now he's got that here now and what he has is that new toy out and Jim Everett I don't think he knows quite yet what to do with it. He figures to go to the old toy here on fourth down and inches. Meanwhile it looked like Dennis Harrow was about ready to come limping off but he goes back into the huddle on fourth and inches. From the 38 yard line. Dickerson and Redden with Damone Johnson in as a third tight end and they're going to go to the air. Are these really As a marker down, Redden got tangled up with Bates about 10 yards downfield. This is what I thought they might do a while ago in that third down and three. No foul. Flag will be picked up. Yard is getting with the first down. Everett had the option if he wanted to throw the football. He also knew that in the sprint outside he could get the first down. And he has made some great decisions tonight for a young quarterback. And, of course, you would expect that with his tremendous career, the great career he had at Purdue. And, of course, the Rams giving up two ones, a fifth, a couple of ball players, an all-pro Ken Hill guard, and William Fuller. But they knew they'd never, they respected their own ability to finish so high in the draft that they'd be drafting quarterback from about 20 or 21, and they knew they'd never get one. So they gave up a lot, but they got a lot. House in motion, first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Dickerson. Picks up about three. Randy White makes the tackle. I mean, how sweet is life with a 12-point lead? Your team is on a, a collective roll, and you know you still have number 29 in the backfield. And it'll extend the career, the play of Jim Everett, of Eric Dickerson. I asked John Robinson, how does he feel about it? Every great running back wants to carry it 25, 30, 35 times. But the way this game is played today, and it is tough and brutal down there, even though Dickerson is very durable, he can wear out very quickly. And ever throwing the football is going to make a major difference in the number of years he's going to play. Second and six. Everett looking for the sidelines and goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Jim Jeffcoat running him out. It will be third and about four coming up. Cowboys, 44 sacks into the night. They've had a difficult time corralling Everett. He, by the way, just tends to run as most right-handed quarterbacks do. They tend to get into position out to the right, and he's done it very well. As I mentioned earlier, John Robinson said he's slippery, and he actually did say this. He said if he was a little kid playing tag, he's not very fast, not very quick, but he would never be it. <laughs> Third down and four from the 29 out of the shotgun. Wobbly pass and intercepted in the end zone. Michael down, probably keeping Dallas in the game. And one he shouldn't have thrown. Shakes his head. 
He was in field goal range, possible field goal range. Michael Downs with his fifth interception. And had effort and so inclined, I think he might have been able to pull it down and pick up the first down on his own. He has a lot of time. Line block well. Good defensive coverage by the Dallas Cowboys. Forced him out of the pocket. He fires the interception, and the Cowboys will have it at their own 20. Rams on top by a score of 22 to 10. So Dallas with the interception and trying to turn things around as Michael Downs picks one off in the end zone. And the Cowboys now from the 20. So set the tailback. Tony D for a yard or two. Now to the 22. And it will be second and eight. Things starting so brilliantly for the Cowboys this year, especially offensively with Dorsett getting hurt on opening night, but Walker picking up the slack and Danny White and the fact the Cowboys scored 30 or more points in their first four games. They became only the third team in NFL history to do that. But there's a kicker to that story as well. Second down and eight from the 22. And the pass is caught. As Cosby comes back and makes the catch at the 34-yard line. Dangerous pass by Pelour. He got it in there. It was a great athletic effort just to get rid of it. But very dangerous. Diving catch and kept it alive. And what Dallas has got to start thinking about now, as you see the pressures with Ecker and Wright in Pelour's face, he didn't even see the catch. He disappeared. But the man they've got to think about is getting the ball somehow to Tony Hill. He is the man who can take it deep for them. They've shut him off thus far tonight, but they have to start going to him somewhere along the line. Pump fake. Pelour keeps and slides out to the 40-yard line for a gain of about seven. Some of you may recall when we had the, uh, the Dallas-St. Louis game in week four this year on Monday Night Football. That was the night that Dallas scored 30 or more points to start the season with four consecutive games. And we, we put up a graphic that night that showed the other two teams to do it, the 68 Giants and the 75 Bills. And the kicker was, neither of those teams made the playoffs. And the Cowboys are in a most precarious spot right now. Second and five. Juggled and caught by Cosby again. Short gain, and they're still about four yards shy of the first. Cromwell covered. No one now in his 10th year, he's had 144 starts. Former decathlete out of Kansas. Maybe not the best of the tacklers back there, but still is kind of a leader. He calls the defenses, changes things off when he sees the offensive sets. Very bright, very knowledgeable. He calls the defenses when Eckern's not in, as is the case right here on third down and four, a long four from the 39 out of the shotgun. was beaten but then I believe got a hand in to bust it up Gerard tried to come back and get it full sprint Johnson starting just a little bit late had there been a little more smoke on this one it could have been six because Gerard has the sure hands had the quickness had the speed and he had Johnson beat and it was still one he could have had it would have been a spectacular catch but that ball had a little more on it it looked like six. <laughs> and Johnson was beaten on the play. Saxon. Ellard at the 14. And Ellard gets it out to the 21 yard line. And the Rams get it back. After a 47-yard boot with 4.01 to play in the third. Rams by a dozen. Not a bad trifecta right there. Mm -hmm. Everett, Ellert, and Eric. And we're going to see a lot of Everett. And for sure a lot of Dickerson, who's having a great year. But all the talk really out here is about this young quarterback, Jim Everett. 
first down Rams from their own 21. 401 to play third period. 22-10 LA. Dickerson. Harry Dickerson. Two or three, Mike Hickman. Number 58 making the tackle. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is strictly prohibited. For Dickerson, that would be a very subpar night. But he's still on a pace that would bring him uh, close to 100. With 64 yards late in the third. The 3-6 average is a significant mark there. And on second and eight, he helps to increase that average a little bit as he takes it out to the 30, where it will be third down and one. Dickerson, fourth year out of SMU. Last week, he had his 900-yard game of the season. And he has 35 of those in his career. And he picks up the yard and about seven more. And a flag goes down at the conclusion of the play out at the 37-yard line. Jim Tunney. And that will negate that gain and negate what would have been a first down. Relatively flag free game thus far tonight and here's Jim Tunney. Holding 86 during the run, 10 yards, still third down. Stamone Johnson, tight end. They're still minus Tony Hunter, who's on the injured reserve. David Hill is the number one tight end right now and Johnson's the backup. It's the first penalty against the Rams tonight that has been accepted by the Cowboys. Another loss they suffered too. Uh, Mike Gooman. A Mr. Everything for the Rams. Tight end, you back, whatever you want to call him. They lost him for the season with a knee problem. Third and six, and they give it to Dickerson. Big hole off the inside give, and he takes it out to the 35-yard line. So the Cowboys expecting pass and very soft in the middle, and the little inside handoff and a first down to the 35-yard line. Ram offense, Ram football. Give it to Dickerson. If it doesn't work, give it to Dickerson again. And eventually he's going to pop one. He broke off a big one, gets the first down. Clock continues to move. John Robinson already starting to think about it. Glance up there and take a look at it. They're in control. escape the pressure and then throws one low intended for Ellard it'll be second and ten Everett the third man taken in the draft think about this Tampa Bay had the number one pick and that turned out to be a big zero for them as Bo Jackson opted for baseball and then Atlanta came along and and went for Tony Casillas to shore up the defense and then Houston had the third pick and that turned out to be Everett they didn't get along and John Robinson gave a couple of ones, a five, a couple of pretty good football players, and they've got themselves a winner. Second and ten, and they give it to the up back. Redden. Redden taking it to the 37-yard line, and it'll be third and about eight upcoming. Barry Redden already in his fifth season now out of Richmond. Madden, excuse me, now. Say the bad news about the Rams up until Everett's time was that they were never very pretty when they were winning. Of course they are now, but the good news was always they usually finished on time. <laughs> That's right. Tell you what, you're a lot prettier at ten and four than at uh, seven and seven. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Third and eight. And it's House, but the pass deflected. Kevin House was there along with Johnny Holloway who might have gotten a hand in. And the way the Cowboys were reacting, he did, and he's upset that he wasn't able to pick it off. I don't think he was all that upset. He was lucky to be there. Mm -hmm. That ball also was put in there. Just absolutely perfect by Everett, and it was a great play by the rookie from Kansas to prevent another first down. 
Gordon Banks. He stands back at the 20. Dale Hatcher with the rush on, and they almost got to it. And it's a high and short kick. And Banks feels it, and Banks gets buried after he had called for the fair catch. But obviously, it was not detected by Norwood Van. And Van is, a, is probably, shall we say, the wildest of the Rams special teamers. There's a difference between being wild and being foolish. Interference with the man making the catch. 51, 15 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, he had to run through his own men. Everyone saw that fair catch, but Van. He had to almost knock his own people out of the way to make the hit. Norwood comes back and he says, what signal? Back to school. Days of the chubby one. Chubby checker. Jackie Slater, one of the best around. Anchor over on that right side, having another good year. A couple of Pro Bowls in the last three years, looking for another one. And Tom Landry looking up at the clock. Not too concerned about that yet. 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter, but obviously concerned with the ineffectiveness of an offense is being directed by Steve Bluer with Danny White on the bench with a broken wrist. Let's see what the Cowboys can do now as this drive commences at the 50-yard line of Herschel Walker. Gets into Ram territory, stopped at the 48, and it will be second and eight. And we keep saying it, but it, it isn't so much the ineffectiveness of the offense, and it has been that, however, and they've made their mistakes, the interception by Pelour with the touchdown, giving up the safety. But the Rams' defense makes every team look pretty awful. Last week against the Jets, Jets with what had been a fly, high flying offense, they could do nothing against them. They just make you look bad. Second and eight as the third quarter expires on a Herschel Walker burst through the middle and ends summarily at the 47 yard line. And that is the end of the third quarter at Anaheim Stadium. And a look at Brown, Ron with a great first half but a separated shoulder and done for the night and we go to the fourth 22 10 we'll be back after this message from your local station as we come back this is on tape about 30 seconds ago tom landry is being escorted off the field and we will get obviously for you as soon as possible a report we would have to assume looking at those circumstances some sort of threat in regard to Landry but Tom is not on the sidelines as we start the fourth period on a third and seven and Newsom makes the catch and picks up the first or close to a first down at the 40 yard line and there is Danny White who had been helping out and Hackett, who runs the pass offense, is upstairs as Landry is back in the clubhouse. They'll be talking back and forth, and if that is the case, it is also very sick. Brutal. It happens. I guess this is the first time. Uh, there have been threats that have taken place in years over Monday Night Football, but this one obviously was deemed by authorities. If that was the case, uh, it was uh, imperative to get him off the field, but we will wait and confirm. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. That's tipped and nearly intercepted, and it winds up a catch by Sherrard. Somehow, some way, <laughs> off a tip. A great play. A great concentration by Sherrard. Right over the top of the receiver. Meanwhile, as you look at this again, Giroux with the tip. I would have to think, huh. Frank, I would guess it would be the first time in the history of the Cowboys that Landry has not been on the sideline. And indeed, I think you're exactly right. It'll be Paul Hackett talking with Danny White on the sidelines. They'll be calling the play. Dorsett stopped by Reggie Doss. And it will be second and 10 at the 29-yard line. So the Cowboys now minus the man who uh, has led them not only tonight and uh, through the years but the entire history of the franchise 27 years he's been on that sideline uh, I know this is an absolute first second and 10 at the 29 yard line was there but 
Sherrard was out of bounds. And he had the defender beaten once again. Fleur leads it just a little bit to the inside is six points. He had a fly open a while ago. Underthrew it. Lost another six points. But as you can see, he had sprinted by. Irvin was there. The ball was just led out of bounds. Third and ten. Again, we're obviously checking this out for you. We don't want to give you any misinformation until we're sure of what we've got on Landry. We won't speculate, and we'll just wait for the official word. Third and ten. And Pelour was in the grasp, and down he goes. No further play. The play had ended at the 42-yard line. The play dead at the 42 in the grasp of Gary Jeter. And Sean Miller, number 98, also there. That's why they bring Jeter in. Sean Miller also was there. Sean Miller has had four sacks from that nose tackle position, but when they go to a four, he goes to the inside position. And he was there along with Gary Jeter. They're tough. They make you look bad. And they're doing that to the Cowboys tonight. So fourth down and 22 now. Cowboys trailing 22 to 10. Mike Saxon to kick. Ellard and Johnny Johnson are the double safeties. Fair catch called for and made at the nine yard line by Johnny Johnson. So the Rams are pinned deep. 12-15 to go in the fourth. And the Rams lead 22 to 10. Now a live shot. Seconds ago, Tom Landry emerged from the Dallas locker room and escorted back out to the field. And there he is, and he'll reassume his normal position along the sidelines. Maybe Alicia called. <laughs> We'll try to find out. It did look very serious. He was escorted by police, one of them with his hand on his revolver. First down, Rams now from the nine-yard line as Dickerson takes the pitch and gets it out to the 12. And the only report we had to this point was that it was not an illness. That's not why Landry went back and escorted out by the entire posse and then brought back in again. And now he's hooking up with Paul Hackett. Hackett, rather, and saying to Danny, what happened while I was gone but he does have security around him and they remain around him so we will continue to try and find out what happened second and seven from the 12 yard line Dickerson takes it out to the 15 and it will be third down and five Back in the harness. Rams deep in their own territory. Playing it conservative at this point. That kind of a defense, you can play it that way also. Third and five from the 15-yard line. Dickerson fights his way out for a first down. And with that kind of running back, maybe it's not too conservative. Clock ticks away. Rams get it out from their own 10-yard line. Superstar, no question about that. The big the E. Dur the durability, Al. 330 carries into the night. Has never left a game shaken up this season. Just goes on and on. And, you know, he doesn't look all that solid, all that durable. Looks almost fragile. But he hits like a tank. It's great power. the tackle the police and the stadium security people will not comment as to what the uh, Landry situation is we've obviously tried to get some sort of a statement from them and uh, of course we'll continue to check for you but that's all of the information we have right now 
second and six. Rams to the 25-yard line. Dickerson out to the 28. Stopped by Rohrer, and the Rams working on the clock. 9.25 to go in the fourth. And they have one of the best machines around in Dickerson to work on that clock. That's the time remaining in the fourth. And as long as you can move the ball to the ground, and they are doing it now, it will make a little short pass, a ball control type of short pass, off play action from Jim Everett, an additional weapon as they continue to try to run the clock out. Meanwhile, Dickerson sneaking up on 100 again. He's got 98. Third and two. first down. Meanwhile, some of the uh, security people watching out and obviously, well, we don't want to say obviously, but it would appear from everything we're looking at here that there was a threat of some nature in regard to Tom Landry, which caused his temporary removal from the field and now back on. And you wouldn't want to speculate, but it could it be possible, Al, that perhaps he went in, they put some sort of a vest on him? They're all around him. They were with him when he went, left the field, and they came back with him. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. As Dickerson takes it out to the 33. I can't remember Tom's exact apparel before the game. I know he came out with a tie, and he came out with a sweater, but there appears to be something underneath. And I guarantee you a hat. as well. Right. But as you can see, and again, I don't have the... Uh, the total recall to be able to say if he had that white clothing or whatever it is apparatus under the gray sweater but there he is patrolling the sideline no question is something extraordinary second and nine Dickerson cuts it back and takes it out to the 40 and it will be third and one it's been all Eric now in the fourth quarter did you see the block by number 30 Barry Redden he's been doing that now for three years for Dickerson he block spraying Dickerson once again. A machine and a time-consuming machine. He is just ticking the minutes off the clock. And perhaps the Cowboys hopes for any playoff opportunity. Dickerson is 100 yard game of the season. <laughs> Slips a tackle and turns what would have been a loss into a, or a bigger loss into a smaller one a loss of one into the second and 11. by the way the record for most hundred yard games in a season 12 and that was set by Dickerson himself in 1984 so if he can do it next week against Miami and against San Francisco he'll tie the record fourth down shattered a lot of records that year 2105 breaking OJ's single season record to kick thanks to his own 22 Rams using as much of the clock as they can since it's running Hatcher has the clock in his sights at the end zone takes it down to four seconds big rush but thanks calls for the fair catch of the 26 and the penalty marker is down as Everson Walls ran into Hatcher Running into the kicker, number 24. Five yards, first down. That hurts. They have struggled and struggled to get the football back to try and get back into the game. And let's take a look at number 24. Coming from the outside, he obviously thought he had a shot at it. And the reason that penalty is there and so severe is that kicker is so vulnerable once he leaves the ground. And Rawls, no question, collided with him. He had he touched the football. It would have been all right. He did not. What Landry was arguing was that he was pushed in by Wiltshire. Wiltshire, number 54, had contact with Walls, but in the estimation of Tunney, Walls came in and receives the penalty. Actually, if Wiltshire did anything, he was knocking him away from yep. the putter. Mm -hmm. So the Rams have it at their own 45. Not the prettiest thing we watched through the course of this game, but it is ever so effective. Dickerson left, Dickerson right. That could have done the Cowboys in right there. Instead of getting the ball back, the Rams still have it on first down. 
Everett fires to the 40-yard line and complete there to David Hill. The tight end makes his first catch of the night. Usually gets one a game. Yep. Got that one for his brother, Jim, <laughs> the CBS sportscaster. You know, years gone by at Detroit, he was an all-pro receiver. One year, he had... 70-some receptions as a tight end. Here, even though he's taken off a lot of weight this year, he is an exceptional blocker. And when you have a Dickinson, that's what you want, and particularly with injuries now to Mike Gooman and Tony Hunter, the role of David Hill has become even more prominent with the Rams. First and 10 from the 41-yard line. Redden a big ball. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Redden. Robinson won't like that. He wants to work on the clock. <laughs> he can run the football. And, you know, when you watch Barry Redden play football, you almost feel sorry for him that he plays in that backfield with Eric Dickerson because he has had some great individual efforts. Look at him read that. That was designed to go a little inside on the left. He saw it with good blocking by Doug Smith and Newberry. Broke it off to the right. Good speed, the kind of speed that as a senior at Richmond, made him a number one draft pick and carried him for over 1,600 yards. But here, well, he just ordinarily works ahead of Dickerson. This time, he has pretty much put this one out of reach. Lansford kicks it through to make the score 29 to 10. And that equals the longest run of Barry Retton's career in a season in which he's rushed for more yardage than ever before. Oh, he loves it. The fight for the playoffs is on. The L.A. Raiders' Marcus Allen leads the charge into Seattle to battle the rival Seahawks on ABC's Monday Night Football tomorrow. Again, the Landry situation. That's a shot earlier tonight. And as you can see, Tom with the tie and the shirt and the vest. And uh, as we suspected, that white underpiece. Uh, very much uh, in our minds, of course, and I'm sure in yours, would be some sort of vest protective vest that he is wearing since his removal and re-entrance to the stadium. Meanwhile, LeVette takes the kick, brings it out past the 30, and goes out of bounds out at the 39-yard line. Rams on top by a score of 29 to 10 and ready to maintain their game-and-a-half advantage in the NFC West. Rather bizarre if that indeed is the case and also quite sick. It really is when you consider the one person whether it be for real or not. And in most cases, they obvious or not. You have to take the protective measures, of course, that cause such displeasure for Tom, family, everyone here, who has been a very good crowd. It is sick. Just takes one. First down from the 40. Hey, Jack. Jack. Swings it out to Tony Dorsett. And Dorsett stays in bounds out at the 48-yard line, run down by Sean Miller, and the clock keeps ticking down toward a Rams victory. And the Rams remain here next week to play Miami. Then they go to San Francisco, and if they beat Miami next week, they will wrap up the NFC West. Pelour nearly picked off, intended for Cosby, and Jerry Gray came that close to an interception. For Dallas almost eliminated you, you can't say that mathematically they are totally out of it but even had they won tonight down the road is Philadelphia playing tough then Chicago third down and two now ball at the 48 yard line 29 to 10 LA. And Pelour gets sacked at the 47 yard line. Again, good coverage. Nicky Sutton was back there. And Tony Hill, the intended receiver, was well covered by Mickey Sutton. Pelour had his eyes glued on. Tony Hill, no options. And this will bring up fourth down. And we'll be in Seattle tomorrow night. Hopefully. Big one in the AFC West. Just the Raiders got in ahead of the fog. 
Raiders against the Seahawks at 9 Eastern time. Well, it's been tough sledding up there for the Raiders. Last few visits. What have they lost four straight there now? Haven't won since 81. Fourth and four from the shotgun as Kalur fires and keeps the drive alive on a pass to Timmy Newsom, who scored the only Dallas touchdown tonight in the first half. So the Cowboys keep their very faint hopes alive with 3.57 to play now. Giants all alone now at the NFC East. They have St. Louis and Green Bay to contend with. And they have a one-game lead now over the Redskins. You wonder about the other Cowboy quarterbacks. Reggie Collier is exciting, but unproven and untested. The other quarterback, Paul McDonald. Through the hands of Renfro third down we're getting the information now that the situation is this a series of telephone threats were received by authorities and it was deemed they were serious enough to take Landry to the locker room and it was evaluated there and investigated and after doing such it was determined by Landry himself to return to the field so they told Tom what the situation was and it was his choice to come back. And obviously under very tight security. Third down and five from the 40. And a first down as Sherrard makes the catch, the number one draft choice. And they keep moving. Obviously there is no comment on the vest that we feel certain there is one because he is in a totally different uniform than when he left the field. You wouldn't suspect any different from Tom Landry. One of the youngest bomber pilots in, in World War II. Flew over 30 missions at the age of 18 years old. Remarkable man. It's just kind of sad, and it is saddening. I think this can even happen in sport. This is a football game. There must be some sort of perspective somewhere. First and 10 from the 34-yard line as Kalur. Throws for Sherrard, and he's tackled at the 13-yard line by Tim Fox, and we're down to 3.09 to you know, play in the fourth. And now if there is one bright spot, it has to be this youngster, Sherrard, who missed almost all of the training camp. Great receiver at UCLA, hurt his knee in training camp, missed all of that, and has come back to make spectacular plays week in and week after week. He is going to be a very exceptional outside receiver. For Sherrard. At the one yard line, apparently an interception. And it is ruled as such by Mickey Sutton. Sutton on his back and somehow, some way coming up with it. And Biasi says, How? And the nightmare continues for Pelour. Sutton now a couple of big plays defensively for the Rams. Let's take a look at it again. Sherrard. When you're down there tight near that goal line, you don't have to take that drop because obviously the field is shortened as you get in close and it was played well by Sutton and right into his hands. Look at Sherrard. He's scrapping. He's battling. He makes the stop. And so the celebration can begin for Sutton and the Rams as they have it at their own six-yard line, 239 to play in the fourth. White is in the game. And the former Heisman Trophy winner takes the ball out to the eight-yard line. And the Cowboys calling for a timeout. Bill Bates wants to stop the clock. Yeah. Charlie doesn't get in there very often. He forgot the snap count. Leaned up there and said, what is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> He's been a great contributor to this Ram team. And Dills, who has replaced Everett for the closing minutes, 
comes over to talk to John Robinson. Step on a Heisman Award winner, and well, we've got three of them playing here tonight. Charlie White, former Heisman Award winner, USC played for John Robinson. Went to Cleveland, there for four years. Never really developed into what he had been at USC. Had a lot of personal problems, came out here, released. As a matter of fact, John Robinson picked him up again, and he's done that with a lot of his former players. And Johnny White has taken this role seriously. He plays on the special team to give it in every effort, every opportunity he has. And yet he must look out there, Al, and see Herschel Walker and Tony Dorsett and think of what might have been. The way it started, Cowboys picking up Walker and a breath of fresh air for them and the way they began this season with a scintillating victory over the New York Giants. And how long ago does that seem? And think about this, the Giants as this season has now uh, completed or is in the, the process of completing week 14. The Giants have, have only lost twice, once to Dallas and the other time to Seattle. You know, and Tom points distinctly to that second Giants game as where they were really hurt. They were beaten there by a field goal. The next week they lost to the Raiders by four points. That's where he said it all started to happen and fall apart. This play fell apart before the snap as flags were down. And now there are all kinds of flags down as Randy White gets into a little bit of a, an altercation with Tony Slayton. Frustrating year, it has to be. Six and two start, and then the fall apart. And the Cowboys, historically, at least in recent times, have not played well toward the end of a season. They start out quickly, and of course, now that they are one of the more elderly clubs in the NFL, there's no reason to suspect they would play any better toward the end of the year and that's been borne out in the last three weeks we have offsetting fouls false start five yards personal foul number 54 it's a five and a 15 the 15 yards will be penalized and number 54 is disqualified for unsportsmanlike conduct the name of the game is football but it doesn't mean you can kick your opponent and that's what white did to slayton and that's why he gets ejected. Very emotional player, Randy White, now in his 12th year. And that time just got out of line, and he's out of the ball game. Nine straight Pro Bowls, that is. They brought him up as the number one draft pick 12 years ago. Al, they experimented and played around with him as a linebacker. And he was not a linebacker, but he's turned into one of the greats of all time, a defensive tackle. Edging up there closer to 34 years of age, however, and a 16-game season. Throw in the fact that the Cowboys played five preseason games. They had that extra one when they played over in London. It's been a long, tough year. Funny year, too. Remember how bad the Cowboys looked in preseason? They went 0-5, and, and there was a good deal of concern. But then a brilliant beginning to the year as White takes the give and... Gets out to the 25, and the Cowboys again want to stop the clock here, so they take another timeout on defense as we come down close to the two-minute warning, precisely 2.21 left in the game. And the Cowboys will try to stop the Rams, force them to kick, and then see what they can do. But the mountain is like Everest when you're down by 19. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford in Anaheim. Rams comfortably ahead, and the Rams at their own 25-yard line on a second down and eight with 2.21 to play in the fourth period. Steve Dill spelling Jim Everett, who had a good night. And Charles White, and again, that play was whistled dead before it began, so the game degenerates here after it had been crisply and cleanly played. Different people in there and timing off. We're going to get a lot of calls. Oh, start. Number 67. Play was killed. Still be second down. That's Five one of them. Settled. That's one of them. Duval Love. And he just doesn't play that much as Robinson giving some of the regulars a little bit of a break. But when you look at this Ram team, you can see a team that is a much better football team than they were three weeks ago. And that is when they finally got around to putting Jim Everett in there. It isn't only that he's a good quarterback and going to be, in all probability, a great one. He is going to make it so much easier for Eric Dickerson to run. When you can throw the football, you can run the football. 
I mean, you can run it, and the Rams can do that. You also can throw it. White on second and 13. Struts his stuff. After the 31-yard line, stopped by Jim Jeffco. And Dallas will spend its final time out here. Or will they? They don't have to. Two-minute warning. So even though the two-minute warning is shown by the clock, Tunney had pointed that the Cowboys are charged with a timeout. Insult to injury. We'll be back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's keep it here for the moment as security continues to um, perform its function. Tunney had called for the timeout, and then one of the other officials came over and had said we've already reached the two-minute warning. I think they're going to charge it with a mouth. It looked like it. They're running the yeah, clock Yeah, that's what back. they're doing. They're taking the clock back to 2.04. So the clock had been stopped, and Dallas had taken the, its last timeout. And when play resumes, it'll be third down and two. And the clock will be stopped for the two-minute warning. And if the Rams can't pick up a first down on this play, then we'll have the two-minute warning, and then we'll have a couple of plays, and you can all go night-night. Twenty-nine, ten, Rams. So 158 remaining in the fourth. 29-10 Rams. Rams on top by a score of 29 to 10 with a minute and 58 seconds to play in the fourth quarter at Anaheim Stadium. Rams on the verge of going 10 and 4, and the Cowboys will be at 7 and 7. And the Rams can tick this all off. The Cowboys cannot stop the clock. So White is still the sole running back, and the T taking the carry. And again, we've had, for the third time now since the subs came on, a stoppage of play before its inception. Seven, leaving early. Who was leaving early? The crowd? <laughs> there are very few here. Security much easier. Yeah. And security almost outnumbering those who were remain. First down, 15. So White filling in here at the end for Dickerson, who had a, another 100-yard night. But again, Everett was the key man. Brown had a great receiving first half but then a separated shoulder rendered him inoperative for the balance of the night white again meanwhile dickerson just purchasing a home in the uh, malibu hills as you look at jeff coat so he'll be a, a neighbor of the world's best spotter kelly hayes our statistician george hill up here in the high rent district and what a commute he's going to have we leave yesterday. Pretty good haul from Malibu to Anaheim. Fine night by Jim Everett. And there'll be many more to come, you suspect, from this youngster. All the credentials living up to all of them. So many things, so right. Second and 17. And out to the 47-yard line. Charlie's only had 15 attempts in tonight, and now he's getting to work as Dickerson gets the rest. Dickerson over 100 yards, but they were a tough 100 yards to come by tonight. Third and 11 at the 47-yard line. It'll be Robinson's uh, third straight season with 10 or more victories. John 11 and 5 last year. Third 
48, and that'll do it. Another play need not be run. And playoff hopes for Dallas all but disappearing with the loss tonight. And again, a bizarre circumstance here. Tom Landry again, surrounded by security. Obviously wearing something under his sweater that we assume to be a vest, having gone in to get one earlier. Strange world we live in. So the Rams win it. It's all over in Anaheim, and it's a convincing victory for L.A. And now the Rams with either one more win or one more San Francisco loss, and the Niners have a tough one at New England next Sunday. The Rams would be the NFC West champions, a game and a half up with two to play. The magic number is one. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford, and that's the story from Anaheim. 29 to 10, the final is the Rams beat the Cowboys. And this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Dodge, makers of the new Shadow, Daytona Caravan, and Lancer. Dodge setting new standards of performance. By Miller Lite, for a great taste, there's only one light beer. And by Braun Electric Shavers, Braun designed to perform better. Travel arrangements made through, promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline, and nobody knows beautiful Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the globe as the leader in sports television. <laughs>